I believe firmly in having just one thing on your screen at a time. The only cases where I don't have just one thing is when I've got like a live dev server. And in that case, like I just need a very simple command to split the screen in half. When you see people with like NeoFetch and some kind of disk usage thing going and like Vim open and a browser open, or just any combination of multiple apps open, it's just not really conducive for good work. It doesn't, like I'm not, I'm not just bashing on like ricing people who have all those utilities up, you know, that's ridiculous, everyone can see that, but I'm even talking about people that have like three browser tabs open or whatever. I also, I have a second monitor, I don't really use it. I'm using it to just like look at myself recording at the moment, but I don't use it for anything other than like a stream monitor and also uh, to read documentation occasionally because it's vertical and sometimes I put discord on it but rarely I, I honestly like turn it off most of the time I just unplug that secondary monitor because I just want to have one thing on the screen so I do have a window manager I do believe in tiling window managers but it's a very minimal config so the way it works is I have about five to seven spaces for different applications the main one is my terminal emulator and then I run tmux inside of that and that lets me just jump around to everything and then I can open up my config but I want to show it off before I talk about it fully anyway yeah I have like project navigation all that stuff from within one terminal window you can totally have a workflow where you've got a tiling window manager you know you open stuff something up and then you zox side or whatever to your directory or you have a bunch of aliases it's one way to do it if you get good enough at doing that that's awesome don't change, but for beginners, I honestly think just having one terminal emulator and using Tmux or Vim uh, terminal nesting is just a lot more efficient. It's a lot easier to learn, a lot easier to get a fast workflow in, and the workflows are often better in my opinion, just because it's it's kind of hard. Like people love to say, "Oh yeah, I'm just got all this stuff. I don't need Tmux. Tmux is like bloat." It's the reason it's not bloat is. I have to work on like seven or eight concurrent projects at once with different dev servers running and the fact that I can just like search through all of them and jump to them, you know. I've got Alacrity right here and then in space two, I've got my browser um, and the browser just always stays in space two. And then let's see, in space three, I have nothing, I leave it blank. And then the rest of my spaces are all application specific. So I have uh, option S, actually, let me turn on screencasting. Let me see, okay, that's in a good place. So yeah, option S to go there, and then you can see one, two. I also, technically, I have uh, bindings to go to one, it's option L and option A, although for some reason option L isn't working, but I'll fix that later. I just use one and two to switch between those, and then S to switch there, and then I also have one to switch to messages, one for all the other things like Discord, one for Figma, one for my file explorer software which is horrible but whatever and then yeah that's basically it everything stays in one um, dedicated space never moves around that way I can always hotkey to whatever application I never get confused I'm never floundering around looking for the app I want I just focus it it's the main thing I do my work in there and sometimes yeah you do want to split things like you have a dev server for instance like what if I'm working on I don't know a let's see if we have a typed file in here Hello, and then I have a live preview going for that. Sometimes I want that split, right? And then I can do that. You can see it automatically tiled, and then I can use OpenShift 1, uh, which really weirdly in this keycasting software sends like that. And then I, then I do have something like this, you know? And I believe I even have resize bindings, but I never use them because I do this just about once a month. I just don't like having two things next to each other. And that's because I believe there's a principle, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it's just like in, in types, at least in a math description language, like the language should be kind of describing what it looks like. I shouldn't need a live preview to work on it. So like I can tell this is an integral from zero to one. I don't need to open up my preview and I just like having it in one screen. And yeah, other than that, like it does tile and then I have like basic bindings, I think, yeah, for like toggling the whatever fucking rotation type. I just never use that, to be honest. I just find it kind of overkill. So here's the config for Aerospace, which is the window manager I'm using. There's two window managers on Mac OS. Both of them are kind of bad by full on window manager, like Linux window manager standards. But to be honest, it doesn't matter. You can use Yabai, which is more stable. It's written in C++ or something. And then there is Aerospace, which is written in Swift. And it has 
a lot it's kind of inspired by the i3 window manager if you've ever heard of that i mean i'm sure a lot of you have heard of aerospace so i won't go deep into it but my philosophy kind of on like window managers is this one completely fills my needs it does exactly what i need it to and honestly i think there's so much like hype around window managers. I'm not in that scene as much, so I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but it seems kind of like all this hype around editors, you know, it's like, it doesn't really matter if it's Emacs or Vim or VS Code, as long as you're fast, they're all capable of pretty good customization. Some maybe a little more than others, some are designed a little better, sometimes you agree with their uh, ideas a little more, but they all basically do the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're configuring it in Haskell or some weird proprietary I don't know, config language designed by some guy. So you can see, okay, so let's see. I guess I'll just go through the keys. Uh, I have no idea what those two do. Enable normalization, flatten containers. I just copied those from the default. Start at login is self. Uh, explanatory accordion padding, I think it's just accordion layout. I don't really know what these keys do, to be honest. <coughs> this whole block is just like, it just works, so I don't remove them. Then gaps is self-explanatory, it's just spaces around the edge. Now we're getting to some bindings. So alt slash and alt comma, those were what I was just showing. That lets you do that. Never really use them. Um, alt command M, I guess that's for resize. So if I open up this and then, okay. Uh, oh, I have, I have alt command M currently bound to, no, that's alt shift M. Oh, alt command M, okay. Okay, okay. Alt Shift M for me. Um, oh shit, I just closed my terminal emulator. Good thing I have Tmux A. Another uh, great argument for Tmux. You can just bring it right back if you close it, which does actually happen occasionally. Yeah, Alt Command M and I just resize. Basically, never use them. I just drag with my mouse. I should have bindings, but I don't know. I'm a little crunched on my. Uh, keys right now, my modifier keys. I have to add like the hyper key or something, but I haven't been bothering. Alt Shift F, F, A, Alt Shift H, I guess, centers my cursor. Literally never used that. Uh, it's not conflicting though, so I'm not gonna delete it. And then these just focus the different workspaces. You can see I have just workspaces defined for all of them. And actually I'll go through and, and comment these just, just to be clear. So this is Alacrity. This is uh, Spotify. And I'm looking for a better Spotify client than the default one. It's just like a little annoying to set up not that annoying, it's probably trivial. Um, what is this, Figma, then Finder, we're doing all lowercase, I guess. Um, key pass, XC, um, video editor, so DaVinci, and then let's see, Alt-D is Discord, I actually use Dorian, Dorian, um, and then let's see, Alt O is, I just added this, oh, OBS. Okay, and I guess let's capitalize all of this just to be professional. So uh, let's go F to that, and then LL, and then V tilde. Okay, that was nice. And then these are just basically the same things, Alt Shift M, just uh, moves to the other monitor. So sometimes I, I have a tall monitor and I just want to put documentation on it. So think of your favorite library, um, Angular JS, and then let's go to the docs. Wow, this is a horrible website. I, I just picked this as a joke, but yeah. And then Alt Shift M sends it to the other monitor. You won't be able to see it anymore when I do that, but rest assured it is going to another monitor. I don't use the other monitor a lot, so I just, I don't know. It's, it's a one monitor, it's like a 1.2 monitor workflow. I barely use the second one. Okay, and then these, all these commands do at the bottom is basically ensure that everything gets snapped into place. So you can see it's just like on window detected and then if app ID equals org.alacrity. And they, they have a whole tutorial on how to do this. I have to look it up every time, but aerospace lifts apps gets you the bundle ID and then you just pass it in here. And then you can run any arbitrary commands. And what would be nice eventually is kind of presets because there are a few workflows I do over and over again. For instance, like if I'm gonna stream, it would be nice to put OBS on the bottom of my vertical monitor and then put like the chat replay on top or something like that or my own replay or something like that, you know. 
and there's a couple of other nice things that I could have, like for instance, Discord on the bottom and then like a uh, documentation or something on top. But I, I just don't like to take up screen space and like my mental capacity with random information. I think it's like cool to have that vision of just like your spaceship control console and like you're looking at all these knobs and dials, but in reality, it's just better to have one thing you're focusing on at a time. It just keeps you more focused. And these on window detected, um, basically all they do is uh, when you start the app up for the first time, it'll snap everything back into place. But other than that, they're free to move from space to space. So I can show that by moving this to space two. So now we're in space two, it, it shows on my other monitor, but, and we can do side by side work, you know, for whatever reason, I'm taking notes and I'm next to something. But if I wanted to snap it all back, I can actually just restart the app, which uh, I can do with aerospace and then restart. I'm just using Raycast to do this. And then you can see it'll snap all um, everything back into its original place. And that actually made my um, recording software go to a weird place, but I can do option O to pull up my recording software. And then I can do option shift M and then it'll send it to the other monitor. So it's not weird. And then option A and that'll focus my terminal again. So I can move everything around pretty seamlessly without ever using the mouse. I do sometimes have to use the mouse to resize things just because I, I often forget this, just because I do it so infrequently. And it's really not a problem. You don't need a perfect uh, keyboard centric workflow to get stuff done. And yeah, that's about it for this one. I also, uh, I used to use this project, uh, I probably still have it locally, called SRHD, which is like a Rust version of SRHD, which just opens your apps for you that I wrote. This project though is so embarrassing. Like I actually hate this project. It's like such a typical performative, um, like Rust fucking rewrite of something that didn't need to be rewritten. Um, can I archive, transfer ownership, disable, change visibility? I, I don't, this, this project does not deserve stars um, just because it's so badly written. It's just like horrible noob software and it just, it, it has all these problems. How do I, oh, number of stars, 88, okay. Okay, hopefully this isn't like docs worthy. I mean, that's my public, yeah, okay. So yep, yeah, that is, destroyed no more stars on that bad boy and i could show you for instance i don't know it's just like it's just a horribly written piece of junk software those are bad examples but like i, I don't know i'm just i'm just raw encoding this plist well that that's not a good example either i don't know the, the reason it's a bad piece of software right is skhd is like a established service and you need these plists to start services on your operating system mac os uses like a special launcher there's like launch control on Linux and I think, no, 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 it's like launch D maybe on Linux and launch control on Mac. That's probably so wrong, but what I'm getting at is this is a very bad program because it doesn't have like a lock file or like an auto reloading config or it's just like slow and laggy and vulnerable and just, it's bad. It's just because it's written in Rust, it's like a terrible, does not make it a good project. So how, how am I like launching applications? It's literally all from aerospace. So for a while I was using uh, this Raycast to do it. And if you don't know, you can just like configure and then go into settings and then just set up a hotkey. You know? And then I could record something and it would just launch it from Raycast. Problem is sometimes Raycast like dies or goes down randomly, or it's just like a little slower than using space-based application switching. So all these apps, they don't actually have dedicated shortcuts. Uh, they just like, oh, and that reminds me, I should put this alt L for workspace two, and then we can, I think there's a way to reload the config or I could just aerospace restart application. And then, oh, that moved my streaming software. So let's send that back over. Should have learned my lesson the first time. Okay, no, option L takes me between them. So yeah, that's pretty nice. Basically, I'm just launching all my apps through aerospace, which is nice. It's like a consolidated app for everything. It's just like launcher, window manager, space manager. And yeah, I really enjoy it. I'm sure people can get tiling window managers going in a way that works well for them. It's never really worked that well for me, but that's entirely, it, it could be just because I'm on Mac OS and the experience isn't as good as a Linux window manager, but 
yeah, I've found my workflow and I don't think it really matters. I, I think there's no efficiency to be gained. I think this is, this is just largely conjecture, but I think I would get an equivalent to slightly worse experience if I tried to rewrite everything using a window manager, but I'm also not blind to the fact that there's likely some parts of my workflow that would benefit from like pre-made templates. And there's, there's some more advanced window management features I'm not taking advantage of for sure. So if you see any of those, I'd really appreciate you pointing them out. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. I'll catch you next time. This video is sponsored by Mr. Finn, which is an Australian psychedelia group that my Greek love, I mean, friend Jake showed me. It's basically, if you've ever heard the House of Balloons by The Weeknd, like the gender inversion of that, which is a really interesting concept. If you know what that means, you know, uh, and if you don't, it's kind of dark and you'll figure it out. But it's a really great, like five or six song album. It's like psychedelic hard rock plus really airy female vocals. Only it has about, I don't know, 3K monthly listeners on Spotify, so they're pretty tiny as of right now. Um, so you should get in on the ground floor of this before it becomes big and famous. It'll look very cool. If you're an impatient person, I would jump right to track two called Lucid Lucy and then go back and listen to the rest of it because it is an absolute banger album.